Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC in the Babylon world, and today I'm going to show you how to overcome one of the very first things that tripped me up when I first started working with Babylon, and that's how to properly load and use external assets. I've set up a playground for us to walk through today, and you can find that playground down in the description below. It's pretty straightforward. It is, has a camera in it. I'm adding a camera, a light, and then a new material. Now, this new material is a standard material that I'm naming new material, and then I'm simply setting its diffuse color to blue. Pretty straightforward. So let's talk about using assets in Babylon for a second. Babylon has, if we uncomment these two lines, Babylon has a mesh builder, which allows us to create primitive shapes automatically within Babylon. So in this case, I can create a sphere. And then I want to say that's equal to the variable sphere. And then sphere.material is going to be equal to our new material. So if I press run, I should get a blue sphere. And I do. And that's perfect. And so when I started working with Babylon, I figured it's got, that's nice and simple. It's got to work the same way for uh, loading in an external asset. And so I found that Babylon has a scene loader dot import mesh. Uh, I can pass it a URL to a specific object. In this case, by the way, side note, I'm using Babylon's meshes library, which is available to you all. It's open source. So feel free to use that. I am loading in a shader ball. And then what I'm doing is saying that's going to equal sphere. And just like I did before, we'll say sphere.material equals new material. And I'll end up with a blue shader ball. So I go up and I hit run, and it didn't quite work. So why didn't it work? Well, it's really a pretty fascinating thing. Import mesh operates differently. The scene loader operates differently than the mesh builder. Because we know that you could have a really heavy asset, one that takes a long time to load, we know that you don't want your Babylon scene to get stuck waiting for it to load. So the import mesh is really smart. It actually says, let's give it the command and let it load in the background while Babylon continues to do other things. It's super, super smart. But if you don't know that it's doing it, it can trip you up. And it did for me. And so what's actually happening here in an order of operations is I'm creating a variable called sphere. It's empty, but what I want to do is populate it with the result of me importing this mesh, this shader ball asset. So step one, create a variable. It's nothing. Step two, let's put this, uh, the shader ball into that variable. And then step three, let's say the material of that is going to equal our new material. Well, the problem here is an order of operations problem. What happens is I create that variable sphere, and then I, on the sidelines, load in that, that uh, shader ball. But while that's loading, while that's happening, I'm automatically skipping to step three, where sphere.material equals new material. So I'm setting step three is happening before step two. The mesh hasn't loaded yet, but I'm setting the material of sphere, which is empty at this point, to new material. And here's how I can prove that this works. If you go underneath uh, the uh, little settings uh, gear here and go to the inspector, I can show you that the shader ball's material, if we look down here, is actually set to simple, simple shader ball mat. That's the material that it comes with. So the operation of sphere.material equals new material, that didn't work. And the reason for this is because of that, hey, it's happening on the sidelines, right? It's a synchronous operation. And so uh, we actually do have a way to properly work with this. And I wanted to show you that today. So we'll go ahead and go back to these two lines, comment them back out, and then take these four and uncomment them. Now, the difference for this with this is the import mesh has an on success callback function. What that means is, once the mesh has loaded, it'll trigger Babylon that it's been done loading and hand us what's the, the result of what's been loaded. So then we can run a function after it's done. So we don't have to wait for it. It can go off and do that thing on the side, but we can still have a, a bunch of operations that happen and not have to wait for it. It's fantastic, but you got to know that it exists. It looks like this. It's uh, just a simple modification beyond the end of this. We're adding in function. And then I'm this new mesh is going to represent everything that was loaded. What I'm doing here is showing you one way, there are several, that you can get a hold of the actual mesh that was loaded. 
Uh, if you look at the hierarchy, I have a root node, and then I have a, some kind of a node to represent a light, and then I have a simple shader ball mesh. So what I'm doing here is saying I want sphere to equal new meshes, the first entry, which is the first thing that I've loaded. In this case, I've only loaded the one. Uh, and then I want to say get all child meshes. Well, there's only one child mesh, so I take the first instance of it, and that's here. Oops. Uh, that's the zero. And so then I'm going to say once sphere, I know what sphere is, it's now specifically the shader ball mesh, then I can set its material to new material. So if we do this right and hit run, we end up with a blue sphere the way we expect it. And again, the reason that worked is because we have a callback function once the mesh is done loading, then it will do that order of operations correctly. So set the variable, uh, excuse me, first we want to load the mesh. Then we want to say, OK, I have a variable called sphere, and it's going to be the mesh itself. Then we can do that material assignment. Uh, and then just to prove to you that this worked pro properly, if we go back to simple shader ball and look at the material, it is now set to new material. Now, that's a fantastic way that you can do operations on a mesh while it's loading in the background, which is a fantastic way for us to maintain uh, user experience and control for the user so you don't have to wait. But there are instances where you may want to wait, and Babylon allows you to do this as well. So let's comment out these four lines, and let's look at these last three. We'll uncomment these. Now, these will not work just yet. The first thing I need to do is go to my very first line, and next to function, I need to add in async. So what this is doing is saying, for this function, I want you to go and look for any time you see a wait. That means I don't want you to continue. I truly want you to wait until this exact operation is done before continuing on. So we have an import mesh async. We're saying, I want to wait on it. And then we can say, so I'm setting a variable called sphere. I'm going to wait until the mesh is done loading. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just showing you here a different way that you can get to the mesh itself, uh, different from what I showed you up above. Now you can get mesh by name, which is simple shader ball. Now that's equal to sphere. And then you can set the material. So the result will look very, very similar. We hit play, blue shader ball. Again, let's just go double check that we have the appropriate material and it is set to new material. So there you go. Those are different ways that you can work with external assets and showing you that critical on success callback if you are truly letting Babylon load assets in the background, which is a fantastic feature. But it is different than when you're using Babylon primitives. And that tripped me up when I first got started. I hope this video was helpful for you. It definitely took me a while to learn all this, but I wanted to share it with you. If you like this video, please consider uh, subscribing to this channel. We have a lot more content that we provide every week. And if you have anything that you'd like to add or see next, please feel free to comment down below. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Thanks.